Before the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, before you became board certified in lifestyle medicine, what were you calling it? Because you were practicing it, but did it have a name back then? Um, we've always uh, referred to it as lifestyle medicine. And um, it, and you're right, though, this sort of formalized it into a specialty. And I'll, I'll come back around to that a little bit. But uh, my interest in this goes way back to 1977 when I was a medical student. Uh, and I read a book uh, called Diet for a Small Planet by Francis Marla Pay, um, and uh, another one called Animal Liberation by Peter Singer. And, and these books spoke to me. They said, wow, we are hurting our planet, our future for our children. Uh, we're um, feeding food to animals instead of people when much of the world was going hungry. Uh, and then when I learned about the really uh, kind of abhorrent conditions on modern factory farms that haven't improved anymore. I said, well, I, I got to learn more about this. I, I became vegetarian at the time and decided to uh, learn about the health aspects. Uh, and I found out it was a, a triple win. Uh, it was better for the planet, better for the animals and better for me. Um, and the more I dug into that, the more I transitioned from vegetarian to vegan to whole food plant-based. Um, and of course, as I feel that benefit for myself. And as I read and study what's possible, I, I share that with my patients. Uh, so way back from uh, the very beginning in the 80s, I was uh, sharing Dr. McDougall's work, his book, Dr. The McDougall Plan, um, helping people to see that what they do uh, makes a huge difference in their future um, and uh, the need for medications. And Many of them uh, became inspired by that uh, and uh, to this day are uh, sticking with me 30 years later, uh, feeling like they don't want me to retire because uh, they, they want somebody who understands and gets that um, they want to they drive, they want to be healthy. Yeah. Why do you think it's not more emphasized in medical school lifestyle medicine? Because they can still teach all the other stuff. You know, there are several reasons for that. Uh, when you say they can teach all the other stuff is true, but it's it's a huge volume of information to learn. Um, and so their curriculums are packed with just disease management uh, and uh, medications with uh, the procedures and diagnostics. Uh, and it gets more complicated every day. Uh, so there are some of that time pressures, but even more important than that are, are some other reasons. Um, one is inertia is that that's not the way they were taught. That's not the way it's done. It's not, quote, the standard of care. It's many of them don't even believe it's possible because they never learned it. Uh, and so it um, so it doesn't become part of the curriculum. Um, and because it's not part of the board exams, it, they don't require to teach it uh, because, um, and this is a, a tough one, but because it, it doesn't pay. Um, you know, I, I spend 40 minutes with a person explaining that their diabetes and hypertension can be reversed and de-prescribing medicines and telling them how to monitor it and giving them resources for how to eat and empower themselves out in the real world. Um, or I could spend 15 minutes and write them from prescriptions for lisinopril and metformin and Lipitor and uh, on your way. Um, so, um, so, and again, it's not, it's not that they're trying to do anything wrong. It's just that uh, emphasis goes where money flows. Um, oh, oh, that's I, a great uh, quote. Did you make that up? That's a wonderful quote. I just made that up. Uh, it, 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 you know, the, the, the pills, the surgery, the um, medications, the office visits, the ER visits, um, our $3.8 trillion healthcare bill is, is somebody's revenue. And, um, you know, there's a great documentary if your if your folks haven't seen it called Escape Fire um, by uh, Dr. Don Berwick. He was former head of CMS, and, and there's a, a quote in there by a publicist who says, "You know, the system is making a lot of money, and and they don't want to stop making money, and they, they don't want you to die." But they just kind of walk that line where, oh, you know, we can give you another pill for this. Oh, when we got emergency room visit, need a little hospitalization, we got you covered. It's all a part of a process that has um, been built up. And, you know, back in the 50s, Eisenhower warned us about the military industrial complex. Well, we have a medical pharmaceutical complex, which is very good at, at acute care, at broken bones, at at uh, curing certain things like childhood leukemia many times. Um, and yet with respect to chronic disease, 
prevention and management, uh, our country ranked, ranked 11 out of 11 high income countries recently. When you look at healthcare, um, the, the, and they looked at things like midlife mortality, uh, chronic disease rates, uh, longevity, uh, medication use, preventive emphasis. And we don't have that partly because they haven't learned it, doesn't pay, and uh, they don't believe that it works very well because partly you've got several industries creating confusion, just like tobacco did. Oh, it's not real, saturated fat's okay, or animal protein's good for you, or all these things that get injected by industries that uh, are benefiting from the status quo. So yeah, this is again, a, probably, I don't know if that was a longer answer than you're looking for, but uh, there's many reasons why it's not emphasized. On the good side news though, is that the American College of Lifestyle Medicine is making some waves. It is an evidence-based approach to taking this powerful tool in our toolbox and letting the world know about it. Um, the number of graduates now and uh, board certified providers from nutritionists to nurses to physicians to across the board are, are growing exponentially each year. And uh, actually Saturday, I'm heading to the ACLM annual conference uh, in Orlando. Uh, one of my colleagues, Melissa Sunderman, who you know is speaking at the conference um, and there'll be, um, I don't know how many thousand uh, providers from all over the country, all over the world there um, learning the latest in lifestyle medicine and this powerful tool. So things are shifting slowly, but but gradually. And uh, you know, I forget who said it, but uh, maybe it was Dr. Esselstyn. He said that the truth is a stubborn thing. It, it doesn't go away. <laughs> and as much as you have people trying to deny that it's real or that um, it's not as strong as we as we feel it is. Um, it's it's emerging anyway because people are demanding it. We can no longer afford the current system, and uh, we're we're going to bankrupt our society with diabetes, Alzheimer's, and obesity alone. Um, and all fortunately, all of these are largely preventable and in many cases reversible.